Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. Now, our, while you're there, sign up for my newsletter at KatherineKerrigan.com to find out more about how you can be healthy naturally. Now, our guest today is Nina Lynn. Nina is one of my favorite people. She is also a menopause coach. And you can find out more about Nina Lynn and her wonderful work at zenofmenopause.com. Welcome, Nina Lynn. Hello. Thank you for having me. Now, Nina, I know you've been a wellness coach for probably, what, 25 years? Could be. (laughs) You're a master wellness coach, and I know that you know a lot about natural healing. What made you decide to focus on menopausal women? Well, I really um, been there, done that, first of all, and um, survived. So I feel like I have that experience behind me. And I, the female clients that I work with, I, it makes me sad to see that they're suffering through that time because I really feel like it should be a kind of a liberation for women to be at that point in their lives when they're no longer raising their families and um, they've become women of wisdom and experience, which I think is very beautiful. So to see them kind of succumbing to the lack of vitality and radiance that I see, I really want to help them get that back. Now, if, is it, if it's okay with, our, with you, I'd like to share for our audience how old you and I are. Because okay. I'm 59 and you are 63. 63. So, you know, the, <laughs> as Nina says, we've been there, done that. <laughs> and I know that when I went through menopause, I was very healthy. I wasn't under any tremendous amount of stress. And it was a way bigger change than I could have ever anticipated. You know, for a lot of women, they're premenopausal, they're in their 40s, and I, I believe the average age of menopause is 52, right? Yes. And so, you know, we hear about menopause, we hear it's going to be a big deal, but then it kind of comes up and surprises us, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, what, was, what was your menopause like? Um. My menopause went fairly smoothly. I think I dealt with um, the major traumas in my life more in my 30s and 40s. And um, menopause for me was at age 56. So, uh, you know, I I was already leading a a fairly healthy lifestyle, um, keeping my stress down and eating appropriately, sleeping, uh, low stress. So for me, it was not that difficult. So I think that's another reason why my heart goes out to women who suffer through it, because I think it's just from a lack of knowledge and and I think a lack of guidance and support. So I want to offer women compassion, guidance, and support through this transition. Now, Nina, what I, my observation is that there's two major turning points for women in their aging process. And the first age... I believe that from my experience, 25 years of full-time experience in natural healing, the first age is age 35. And um, Dr. Diana Schwartzbein, medical doctor, hormone expert, who I know you and I have both studied with, she says that below the age of uh, 35, that 20 to 30% of people have a damaged metabolism. And over the age of 30, 35, 70 to 80% of women have a damaged metabolism. And by damaged metabolism, that simply means that you are breaking down faster than you're, than you're building up, and the aging process really accelerates. So what I find is that women really need to you know, focus on their health, start exercising regularly, start eating better and managing their stress in their early 30s, and then, <laughs> It was funny, Nina, because um, recently 
I had a client come in my office and she said, oh my goodness, Catherine, I'm in such terrible adrenal burnout. I said, well, how old are you? She said, I'm 46. I said, everybody who's 46 is in adrenal burnout. <laughs> but I said, by the time you get to my, be my age, which is 59, you think, you know, it's just not worth it. I want to contribute. I want to make a difference. I want to serve, but I don't want to kill myself. So then that second big turning point is menopause, but it doesn't happen all at once. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So Nina, as a menopause coach, what areas do you work on with clients to help them better manage this huge biochemical change? <laughs> okay, well, um, of course, nutrition, stress reduction, adequate sleep, which is vitally important, appropriate exercise, and then emotional clearing work. Again, huge. Okay, so, you know, let's go into those areas, you know, much more deeply. What nutrition tips would you give to menopausal women? Well, um, this would go for just about anybody in general, but definitely when you're struggling with hormone Im imbalances, uh, you really need to replace the processed, refined, packaged foods with whole, organic, real food. That means something that you can plant and harvest and eat. So in other words, you're not gonna find a pasta tree or a bread tree anytime soon. Um, then, and this was from Diana Schwartzbein as well, um, balancing your meals with a good clean protein, a healthy fat, and then a moderate amount of carbohydrates, preferably in the form of real fruits and vegetables. Um, what I've also found is um, that a lot of people don't really understand, well, what's a healthy fat? So we've all heard of coconut oil that is extremely healthy and healing for the brain, for the entire system. Um, the essential fatty acids, omega-3s, are extremely healing. Um, there are a couple of omega-6 uh, essential fats that are good. GLA and CLA um, are also anti-inflammatory. The not-so-healthy, not-so-beneficial omega-6 oils um, would be vegetable oils, so we want to steer clear of those. Um, nuts and seeds are a healthy oil. Um, any proteins that you eat should be organic, so you're not also getting growth hormone, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, along with um, the meat. And we don't even need to go into the energetic um, patterning that you're taking on with animals that were slaughtered inhumanely. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a matter of educating, it's a matter of supporting uh, women in, well, how, how do I go about doing that? Well, you know, one of my favorite meals is a big colorful salad, starting with like arugula, dark leafy green vegetables, spinach, adding some colorful peppers, maybe carrots for orange, yellow peppers, um, adding tomatoes for red, getting in some crushed uh, walnuts for some omega-3s, uh, some sunflower seeds for vitamin E, and then uh, putting on some grilled salmon for a good healthy protein source and also some good healthy fats, topping it off with some flax seed, um, and then a dressing made from uh, uh, virgin olive oil and um, apple cider vinegar. So that's going to be a very healthy kind of hormone balancing meal of real colorful foods. Um, so that's, that would be one of my suggestions. Now, Nina, let's go back to talking about what menopause actually is. My understanding is that menopause has occurred once you've gone at least 12 months without a period. Is that your That sounds accurate, yes. Although a perimenopause starts long before that. <laughs> and all of these symptoms that women struggle with in menopause, they're struggling with in perimenopause. Uh, as your progesterone lowers, uh, starts in perimenopause, and it lowers at a faster rate than estrogen. So that already throws you into what's called estrogen dominance, which causes all kinds of even PMS kind of symptoms, symptoms and brain fog and fatigue. And um, that's just having too much estrogen in your system, which also consequently um, interferes with thyroid hormone functioning. So then you're getting thyroid hypothyroid symptoms of maybe losing your hair and being cold. 
So that builds on itself. Um, the whole stress factor, of course, starts a hormonal balance no matter where you are in your life because when you're swimming in cortisol, that throws off all the balance of all of your hormones. Your hormones work kind of like a spider web. So when you imbalance one of them, it's like flick, flicking a web and then all the hormones are affected negatively. So um, one big area that women can improve on to help make it through menopause more easily is to have healthy adrenal glands. So before menopause, it's estimated that 40% of your estrogen and progesterone are produced by the ovaries. After menopause, that shifts to 90%. So if your adrenals are not healthy, then you're not going to get that help for bringing in the extra um, hormones that your ovaries have stopped producing. Now, Nina, what, when does perimenopause begin? And at what age on average, if, if women on average go into menopause around 52, some earlier, some later, mm -hmm. when does perimenopause begin? And exactly what is perimenopause? Okay, so perimenopause begins really for a lot of women around the age of 35. And um, you'll recall that uh, Diana Schwartzbein was saying that at the age of 35, all of our major um, euthanizing hormones start declining. So testosterone in men, estrogen, progesterone in women, growth hormone, DHEA. So that all starts at 35. And um, what I have seen is that depending on the level of stress a woman is under, her perimenopause and menopause is going to start at a different age. Highly stressed women are going to start this process sooner. And I think, again, it's because of um, the pregnenolone steel, where when you're stressed, your body has to produce cortisol. And it takes pregnenolone as a precursor for cortisol. So you're not getting that pregnenolone that should be going into producing estrogen and progesterone is being shuttled into producing cortisol. So it it's really um, varies among women, I would say around the age of 35. Um, I personally don't remember symptoms that early, um, but I, was, I also didn't start menstruating until I was 16. So I'm kind of on the later side of that curve. But yeah, I think it just depends on the actual level of health um, that you start with in your 30s. And perimenopause is, again, it's, it's when you start losing um, or reducing your production of progesterone. And that, that could throw you into estrogen dominance. And the other thing about estrogen dominance is um, that's increased by the amount of fat you're carrying because fat produces estrogen. And then it's also increased by what kind of petrochemicals you're taking into your body. Are you using plastics a lot? Are you using the microwave? Are you using plastic in the microwave? That's kind of the worst combination. Um, do your cosmetics have petrochemicals in them? Your cleaning supplies, you, you know, I mean, environmentally, we're hit with it all the time, but we can try and clean the rest of our lives up to, to balance that. So there are a lot of factors. Everybody's an individual, but I would say around the age of 35 for most women. Now, uh, just today, I did a medical intuitive reading for a woman who was 44, and her symptoms that she needed help were with were anxiety and insomnia. Mm -hmm. Age 44, anxiety and insomnia. And when I tuned into her, a large part of her anxiety and her insomnia had to do with her declining levels of hormones. So as we go towards menopause, we're in, when we're in this perimenopause, what are some of the symptoms that women can experience in addition to anxiety and insomnia? Yeah. Um, depression also. Um, brain fog is a big one, just being unable to concentrate. Um, even breast tenderness, like PMS symptoms. Um, bloating can occur. Uh, fatigue, for sure. Fatigue's a big one. And depression and fatigue can just, it, that's a slippery slope. It can just take you down into. Um, you know, your, the other symptoms that you're experiencing. Uh, I think also for women, you know, if, if they're starting to feel these perimenopause symptoms, they can also just emotionally 
start putting themselves in that place, like thinking, oh, well, I'm really starting to decline. And then, you know, owning that belief system. So that's, uh, that's a powerful area to work with women on is to shift their perception of what is going on in their bodies. Um, so that's kind of an energetic and a, and a um, mental, emotional approach. But just physically, the adrenal glands have got to be addressed. Now, um, for the audience, two of my books uh, are relevant here. Um, I published two of my Amazon number one bestsellers. Unlimited Energy Now is a handbook that you can use to overcome adrenal burnout. And as Nina said, you're, you've got little glands called adrenal glands. They sit on top of each of your two kidneys and they secrete the stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. And what, the more stressed you are, the more that all your hormones will be depleted because your body has orders of priority. So when you're being chased by the dinosaurs, you don't really have time to have sex. So when you're, the major hormones in your body are your cortisol and your insulin. And by major, what I mean by is that your body produces a lot of them. And you can make yourself insulin resistant simply by having adrenal burnout. So my book, Unlimited Energy Now, I wrote it very simply and very clearly. You can follow that book to help you rebuild your energy. And the second one is Banish the Blues Now, which is about how to heal depression without drugs. Something like 12% of U.S. adults are on antidepressants. And Nina, why do you think so many women in perimenopause and menopause feel depressed? Well, um, another thing that happens with estrogen dominance and as your progesterone is lowering is, uh, and your cortisol is high, it suppresses your serotonin levels. So serotonin is the um, neurotransmitter slash hormone that makes you feel happy and content. So as that reduces, women will start to feel depressed. Um, the vicious cycle of low serotonin is that with low serotonin, you're craving carbohydrates because carbohydrates will raise your serotonin levels. Then insulin comes in, of course, to shuttle the sugar out of your blood and then that high insulin further suppresses serotonin. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. Um, another point about the estrogen dominance um, is that if, as the high estrogen suppresses thyroid function, you can experience constipation. And one way to um, detoxify uh, used estrogen is through the colon. And um, if you're constipated, then you may be just be recycling used estrogen, so that increases your estrogen dominance. So um, I like flaxseed um, to help cleanse the colon and, and um, give the body more fiber as well as omega-3s. And flaxseed, we know, kills cancer cells and pulls the bad estrogens out of the body. However, I don't recommend flaxseed for anyone who has Crohn's or colitis. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That would be too irritating. Now, Nina, what role does stress play in our hormonal balance? Well, that's pretty much what we've been talking about um, with the cortisol being the stress hormone um, that most people are just constantly swimming in. So that cortisol high drives up insulin, um, creates estrogen dominance, um, suppresses thyroid function. It throws everything out of balance. So the, the, the stress uh, is, is a huge factor. Now, there are certain um, stress-reducing exercises that I like to give to my clients. And um, a few of them are uh, tracing the central and governing meridians, which really helps um, create the appropriate flow of energy through the energy meridians. Um, and that's very easy to do. The central meridian runs up the front of the body, so you just start by gently touching or placing your hand near your pubic symphysis, drawing it up the body, touching the bottom of your lip. You want to repeat that three times. Yep. And for our audience, you can learn how to trace your acupuncture meridians 
Um, in my book, The Difference Between Pain and Suffering, I've got diagrams of all your acupuncture meridians that show you. So our listeners who are listening to this, um, so tell, tell us the governing meridians, the tip of the tailbone, yes? Yes, tip of the tailbone, up and over the back, down to the top of the upper lip. Again, you wanna repeat that three times. So another easy one is because we have little miniature acupressure points and um, acupuncture points all around our ears, is just to massage your ears and oh, this feels good. Just like when you do it on a dog, it feels good. <laughs> it's very relaxing and it can help just balance all of those points as well. Um, another one, of course, is just breathing. Four square breathing is so easy. You inhale four counts, you hold four counts, you exhale four counts, you hold four counts, you repeat four times. <laughs> so just breathing deeply is helpful. Um, placing your hand on your heart, closing your eyes, visualizing your happy place, quote unquote, will also help reduce stress. So there are many ways. And um, I know they're in a few of Catherine's books and um, there, I have them on my website. They're very easy to implement. Reducing that stress hormone is paramount. Now, Nina, what exactly is estrogen dominance and how does that affect the thyroid? Okay, well, estrogen dominance, <clears throat> like we've been talking about, is just um, a relative level of estrogen that is um, out, pretty much out of control. It's much higher than your estrogen level should be. Okay, so part of that is caused by the lowering progesterone. Part of it is caused by all the xenoestrogens we're getting in our environment. Um, part of it is caused by carrying too much body fat, which produces the estrogen hormone. Um, and this is going to produce kind of PMS symptoms, brain fog, breast tenderness. It could even be depression. Um, so there are ways to reduce estrogen dominance by cutting out as many plastics as possible, cleaning up your cosmetics, um, I, bringing your weight down so that you're not carrying extra body fat, um, reducing your stress. Those will all, are all things that will help with estrogen dominance, as well as cleaning up your diet. Now, and how does estrogen dominance affect our thyroid? Well, the, um, the extra estrogen in the system will suppress the thyroid hormone. It can actually mimic thyroid, sit on the thyroid receptor, and prevent the thyroid hormone from, from getting into the cell. Now, of course, a lot of women who go through menopause, they, they go to their medical doctor, and, and I'm very compassionate about this, and take hormones, which may help to alleviate some of the symptoms as your hormone levels drop. But how does taking estrogen actually affect our thyroid? Well, it just depends on your level of estrogen. If your estrogen is low and you need that extra estrogen to balance your hormones, then it's a good idea. Um, it, clearly, you're not going to take estrogen, which should be biodynamic and never um, bioidentical, I'm sorry, and never um, synthetic. But you're really not going to take that without a prescription from hopefully a naturopath or a holistic uh, functional medicine doctor. And they're going to run some tests to find your levels before they start um, uh, prescribing that. So you should be pretty safe with that. Um, I don't think a doctor is going to prescribe estrogen if you already are swimming in it. Now, Nina, I believe the statistics show that the average woman who goes through menopause gains about eight to 10 pounds. And this is very upsetting. We're already, you know, going through a lot of change. Or the people around us are changing. Our relationships are changing. What can menopausal women do to avoid weight gain or lose weight in a healthy way if they have gained weight as a result of their hormones shifting? Okay, well, um, the first thing that has to happen is the metabolism needs to be healthy, like you were talking about um, damaged metabolisms. So that is going to involve basically everything that I do with women. Proper nutrition is going to help balance that metabolism and heal that metabolism. Um, adequate sleep, uh, appropriate exercise, and then also working on clearing energy blocks and emotional traumas. Now, how can women, menopausal women get a good night's sleep? I, I remember when I first w went through menopause, I went through for a whole week without sleeping. 
<laughs> um, that is a, uh, a real concern <laughs> in menopause. And um, there, are, there are several ways you can approach that. And again, it's going to be very individual to the person. Um, I know one thing that actually helps you, Catherine, because your metabolism runs better on protein is that if you have some protein before you go to bed. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a much better idea to have protein before bed than carbohydrates because that's going to already throw your, um, raise your cortisol when you're trying to get to sleep and that's not what you want. Uh, if you, There are a few, a few things you can do. You want to be uh, very calm, have a calm practice before you go to bed, whether that's meditating, whether that's soaking in a hot tub, um, listening to relaxing music, reading is very good, just that eye movement of reading helps you fall asleep. Uh, as long as you're reading something that's pleasing to you or spiritual, um, definitely need to unplug from electronics about a half an hour before bedtime. Um, and by the way, bedtime should be as close to 10 p.m. as you can get it. Um, and then you want really seven to nine hours of sleep to get that brain regeneration and hormone regeneration. Um, the bedroom needs to be dark, ambient light will keep you awake, um, and it should be cool. Yeah, I, I believe I read that even a light behind your knee will shut down your production of melatonin. Correct. <laughs> the bedroom needs to feel like a cave when you're going to sleep. Yes, yes. I, I tend to throw pillows over little lights that are coming out of nowhere to make sure that they're not touching my skin in any way. And if you look at all this, Nina, it's very complicated, right? All these lifestyle factors, each one affects the other. So your sleep will affect your nutrition and your nutrition will affect your exercise. And yes. your exercise or lack thereof is going to affect your weight, which is going to affect your self-esteem, which is going to affect your energy and so on. Yes. So when you work with menopausal women as a coach, how long do you typically work with them? I like to work with someone for at least three months. It takes about that long for changes to really settle in and for people to um, be able to integrate these tips and suggestions into their everyday lives. And a lot of people know what they should be doing, but they either just can't do it on their own or they just don't get around to it. So it's very helpful to have someone literally holding your hand through the process. Because yes, there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle. It's not just addressing sleep. It's not just nutrition. It's not just taking a spin class. There's everything works completely together because we are integrated systems. So it, it's necessary to really get all the pieces working together. Now, people who are listening to our program, they're going to be literally all over the world. Um, can you work with clients uh, by phone, Skype, and video conference? Yes, absolutely. So you work with people over time. And I know from working with people myself, it takes time to build healthy habits. Yes. And, and if you haven't been eating well, and if you haven't been exercising, and if you haven't been sleeping well, and if you haven't been dealing with your emotional stress, then suddenly having to put it all together can be quite overwhelming. It's uh, an awful lot. And um, uh, one piece that, that women used to get wrong, I think they're doing a little bit better, but it's hard to say with all these extreme exercise classes, is that they would over-exercise. Well, under-eat and over-exercise was the typical 90s theme, I think. And I think it damaged a lot of metabolisms. <laughs> um, so, you know, the typical woman would work at a stressful job all day and then go take a spin class and um, come home and deal with the kids and, and the husband. So the, just constant stress. So over-exercising, again, is going to flood your system with cortisol. So um, actually better after work to go home and meditate. <laughs> or take Catherine's yoga class, <laughs> or Qigong. It's, you just need to balance the stress in your life with relaxation, not more stress. So there are ways to exercise. Walking in nature is beneficial. Swimming is fantastic. Um, 
if you, again, if you're under 35 and extremely healthy and fit and eating a very healthy diet, then you can go do these um, I, CrossFit classes that are, would just break down the system of a 50 or 60 or even 40 year old woman. So um, better choices are out there. Um, but again, I think it's just a lack of knowledge and it's the old mindset of, you know, no pain, no gain, which is, mm. Now Nina, how much and what type of exercise do you recommend for menopausal women? Well, again, I wouldn't recommend a spin class. Um, I used to own health clubs and I'd see women um, taking these spin classes all the time and then complaining about cellulite. <laughs> so, which again is a byproduct of um, too much cortisol in your system. So uh, you want to, you do want to move your body and you want to do it in a way that's enjoyable to you, but not exhausting. Um, so I, I love yoga. Um, I love Qigong, walking in nature. Um, you know, if, if you can do a dance class or even a Zumba class, if, you're, if you've got your stress under control, um, can all be beneficial. Better if you love what you're doing. And Nina, a lot of our audience may think, well, what's wrong with jogging, spinning, or, 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 or working out really hard? Well, um, the only thing that's wrong with it is if you, it may not be appropriate to your specific level of stress and um, metabolic health. If you have a damaged metabolism, and you over-exercise or you push yourself physically, you are further damaging your metabolism. You are digging yourself into a deeper hole. So uh, if we can get your metabolism healed and um, we can get you sleeping seven to nine hours a night and emotionally unburdened, um, then you could probably do something more difficult if you really love to do it. I don't like running for women anyway. It's so high impact and everything drops. Breasts, uterus. It's, you know, walk fast. <laughs> right. Now, you talked about under eating and over exercising. How can our audience tell if they're under eating and over exercising? Um, boy, uh, I would say if you are, because again, that depends. Like I, at this point in my life, I don't need as much food as I did in my forties. Um, so I eat small amounts during the day. And again, it's such an individual personalized program as far as your eating goes, because it just depends on uh, the health of your metabolism and that's an individual thing. But uh, of course, if you're uh, spending the day drinking Diet Cokes and eating a swizzle stick for lunch uh, and then Red Bull and McDonald's for dinner, you know, you pretty much know that's not a good idea. The balanced meals, a small amount of protein, a healthy fat, a small amount of real carbohydrates, uh, pretty much every time you sit down will be a good idea. If you have some body fat to lose, um, take your lunch, eat half of it, make sure it's the good, healthy, proportionate lunch, save the other half, eat it for dinner. So you're eating relatively smaller amounts of healthy meals. Nina, how don't, do you don't not eat. <laughs> don't not eat, yeah. And, and what's wrong with not eating? Not eating throws your system into stress. And of course, then you've got adrenaline <laughs> to join the cortisol. And it just throws all your hormones out of balance. So yeah, you really need to eat and you need to eat in a balanced way to have a healthy metabolism. And it, you, you have to have a healthy metabolism to be healthy. Nina, how do you work with women on emotional clearing? Because you talked about stress. Yes, um, emotional clearing is so interesting to me because Again, it's completely individual to the person. So I use muscle testing or specialized kinesiology um, to find uh, what emotional blocks are existing for women. Um, and it's just a peeling of the onion. It's just like being a detective. 
you just get deeper and deeper into where this issue started, where it's stuck in the body, um, and then we discover how we can clear it. So it, it's so rewarding, and it makes such a difference in women's lives, and it, and it will help bring you out of this. Yeah. Now, going back to the big picture, Nina, mm -hmm. if women go into perimenopause at 35, and they go through menopause on average at 52, when should women start preparing to go through this big change, do you think? Um, at least by 30. Uh, I, I think you, at 30, um, you're feeling pretty invincible. <laughs> you're a full-on adult. Hopefully you're in full stride with your career. Um, and that is a really good time to... Uh, just take account of your life and um, make sure that you aren't, if you are in bad habits already, um, lifestyle habits, nutritional habits, exercising habits, then just, you know, know that you have a few years before you need to really get yourself cleaned up. If you can be eating beautiful, whole, colorful foods um, at 30, 35, exercising appropriately, really sleeping, managing your stress, um, you are going to have a much, much easier menopausal transition. Just because your, your um, metabolism will be healthy and your adrenal glands will be healthy. So yes, your ovaries will slow down their production of um, your sex hormones, but your adrenals then will be able to pick up that slack. Nina, I know that you do something called food and spirit. What is that and how do you incorporate food and spirit into your work with your menopausal and premenopausal clients? Well, food and spirit is a system of um, working with people that incorporates um, seven systems of healing, basically, and um, they are patterned after the seven major chakras. So it's just a holistic way of pulling in all of these aspects of ourselves in, our, in the way we eat and the way we live. Well, the seven aspects um, start with the root at the base. That color is red. The glands associated with the root are the adrenal glands. And the issues associated with the root are survival, safety, and tribe. Uh, then you move up to the flow, which color is orange. And um, that would be your ovaries and, and testes. And um, the issues related with that are um, creativity and relationships and emotions. Then we move up to the fire, which would be the pancreas, and that deals with the digestion. That color is yellow. And the issues there are balance and power and energy. Then you move up to the love, which is uh, green and relates to the heart and the thymus. And those issues would be compassion and expansion and service. Then the next would be the truth. That's blue and that's the thyroid. And so we're talking about authenticity and voice and choice. Then up to um, the insight, which is the pituitary gland. And then we're talking about uh, reflection and intuition and visualization. Then the last would be um, the spirit, which is violet, and that's the pineal gland. And then you're talking about connection and purpose and soul. So um, just dealing with all of these aspects of self um, when you're working with clients incorporates kind of a whole body connection into the work. And does Food and Spirit uh, recommend specific um, lifestyle changes, natural healing remedies for each chakra? There are therapeutic modalities that relate to each um, aspect, and um, they would be nutrition, um, then checking in on your emotions, then your thoughts and belief system, um, uh, then movement, um, affirmations, uh, visualizations, and meditation. So there are therapeutic modalities that relate to each aspect. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that when women go through this huge biochemical change, we can feel different about ourselves. 
Mm -hmm. We're not 22 anymore. We're not 30 anymore. We're usually not 40 anymore. Although I have had clients go into menopause even before age 40. Wow. How, how can we maintain our self-esteem and continue to feel good about who we are as we go through this aging process? Yeah, that takes, um, that takes some support um, from a coach and just uh, really shifting of the perception. It's so easy to just buy into um, what we're taught in society, especially in America, that as we age, we become more useless. And especially as women lose their ability to reproduce, that's such a large part of being feminine, right? But we can uh, embrace that we are still feminine, <laughs> that it doesn't just you know, come down to our reproductive organs that make us feminine. We are uh, soft, we are nurturing, we, um, we create beauty where we can. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I, when I owned health clubs, I see women always ask me, well now how do I tighten up the back of my arm, right? And it was, a, it was a common theme. Biceps, no problem. We could tone our biceps, but it was difficult to, but men had very strong triceps. So I thought about it and then I realized, okay, here's what it is. This is the movement women do. This is the movement men do. The so women pull toward us. Women embrace and men push away. <laughs> So men's triceps, oh, they're strong. Women's biceps are strong. So I just thought that just dawned on me so many years ago that, right? Yeah. Well, I will also say my understanding of hormones is you hold fat in your body in specific areas depending on hormone, your hormonal state. And men have higher testosterone generally than women. And your testosterone is reflected in your body in your tricep area. Ah. When you've got too much cortisol, you gain weight around your belly button, oh. and when your insulin is out of balance, you gain weight around your hip area, around your um, inside the iliac crest. Mm -hmm. And when you're estrogen dominant, you get fat thighs, which <laughs> who likes that? No, um, we need to correct that immediately. Or immediately. Now, Nina, if there was just one thing that you would recommend for women struggling with menopause, what would it be? Well, you know, I, this area, this kind of second chakra area um, that uh, we feel stops working for us, right? Uh, it's also the area of creativity. It, um, so if we could tune into and express our creativity, this area doesn't need to feel so empty. Yes, we could bring energy into our second chakra or the food and spirit flow aspect through increasing our creativity. So I had a very good conversation with my mother yesterday about this because she is an artist and by the way, 95 years old, healthy and going strong. Um, and she said, she agreed with that. She's, she's always had a purpose. She's always been creative and she's, you know, healthy and strong at 95, but that she never felt that emptiness after, you know, she went through menopause. In fact, she had a hysterectomy because everybody was doing it. Uh, you know, all doctors were doing that in the seventies. So, but that's always stayed alive for her because she's creative. So I think if, if women, if I could help women find their passion find what feeds their soul and express their creativity that I think would, would really help bringing us through this time. And Nina, as a Nina Lynn, as a menopause coach, you said you like to work with women a minimum of three months. So are you working with women uh, once a week, once a month? How do you actually go through their process? Um, well, I do a very intensive um, assessment with them. I need to hear their story, where they're coming from, what their goals are. Um, and then uh, from there, I will start developing action steps for them based on their area of greatest need. And um, then I work with them. There's a, a, each week, I will assess how they've done on their action steps and either add to them 
or let them, you know, incorporate them more completely. Um, twice a month, well, yes, twice a month, I will have a face-to-face -face with them. Um, and then there's a form that they can send to me um, that shows me how they're eating, exercising, sleeping, thinking, um, that I can then review and give them feedback on. And that we can do as often as they're comfortable with. Nina Lynn, menopause coach of zenofmenopause.com. Any final thoughts for our audience? Um, just that, you know, as women, we are, we're so powerful and beautiful and loving and strong. And I think as I'm aging, I'm just finding that uh, I just don't stress the little stuff as much. And I'm really happy about that. And I'm just embracing my femininity um, as the years go by. It, it doesn't have to change. You've been listening to Nina Lynn, menopause coach. You can find out more about Nina and her excellent work at zenofmenopause.com. This is the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, Amazon number one bestselling author and medical intuitive healer. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. And remember, when you take care of yourself through exercise, through rest and meditation and proper eating and keep your emotions balanced, then you can sail through menopause easily as Nina Lim has been sharing with us. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time.